Hello and welcome to Graduate Theory. Today is a very special episode of Graduate Theory. If you've been a listener for a while, you'll remember that at the end of every episode, I ask the guests what's some advice that they'd give people starting their career today. Today's episode is a compilation of these things. We've gone back into the archives, found the first half of the Graduate Theory episodes, so from episode 1 up to episode 24, we've gone back and found all these sections where the guest is giving some advice on what advice they would give to someone that's about to finish or, or finish university or start their career, and that is what today's episode is. So it jumps around a fair bit, but I think there is some seriously good advice in this episode. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Graduate Theory Newsletter. It's the first link in the description. You get an email straight to your inbox every single week with a bit of a reminder of the Graduate Theory episode, my thoughts, and my takeaways from each episode as well. So thanks again for listening, and please enjoy. All right, and the last question for you today, Joe. is if yep. you were going to graduate university again, or maybe even start wow. university, you can choose. Um, yep. What's your one piece of advice? Yeah, wow. <clears throat> it's like the question we ask a lot around the book is what advice you give your 18 year old self. Mm. And I think I can say the same thing to both the version of me starting university and the version of me ending university. Make the most of it. Mm. Don't settle for any less. Yeah, I like that. Because even leaving, like whatever's coming next. And that's a big focus on what you have again, make the most of it. Mm. Whatever you can access and start with, make the most of it. And if it was at university, I didn't make the most of it. Like I wish I could go back and not really, cause I learned a lot, which is applied, made me more focused in life after and make the most of it. I think that's it. Good. So the last question I've got for you, Darren, is we've got the audience of graduates here. So one piece of advice that you'd give to someone if you were graduating university this year or one lesson that you would give to someone else graduating this year? Wear a mask. Get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> now, as, as, as silly as that sounds, it's actually a lot deeper. So what we've had since World War Two, and it's been driven a lot by the US, is the power of the individual. Okay? Oh, my rights, I can do this, I'm going to be the top, blah, blah, blah. The idea of COVID and climate change, these are all existential crises that affect the whole world. Now, I can put a mask on and I can get vaccinated and I can go like hippie, don't drive anything, but I'm not going to stop COVID by myself and I'm not going to change climate change by myself. We need as a society to work together. So the people who are going... Lockdowns are bad. It's not affecting me. My business is going down the toilet. You've got to change. They're missing the tectonic shift that is going on in society. That is, we are moving from a collectivist, uh, sorry, an individualistic society back to a collectivist society where we rely on each other. There's an Ethiopian uh, saying, a traditional uh, Ethiopian saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And that's where we are now, that the mask and the vaccination is the metaphor for what we need to do. This is all about coming together. The knowledge that you have is great. It's common, but it's great. Your experience that you have from your life that have brought you here today is uncommon and needs to be shared. It's your knowledge that needs to be shared. So get vaccinated. If for no other reason, fuck me, we're not getting out of this unless you do. <laughs> I've got one last question for you, Scott, and that is if you were going to start university again, given all your experiences now, where, where you are you're with your startup and your experiences all through university, what is one, one lesson that you'd give yourself if you were starting university again um, at the start of next year? Join the constant student. Honestly, that that is what I would say. That yeah. without it, without an absolute doubt, that is what I would say. That's why that's why Liam and Joey and I are working on it. That's why that's why it exists. There's so much that you can learn right now. If like university is being delivered online, you know, the internet is. Imagine the imagine learning on the internet without the kind of university constraint of having to do subjects and coursework. 
how about learning within you know, 12, 12 weeks or within one or two years, within one year, not only do you learn one year's worth of information and content, but you can actually then learn and earn and you can earn money for things that you're learning and kind of really level up in multiple ways. And same thing, it's the ecosystem. The ecosystem is something that is, it's your platform to build upon. So all of the things that I kind of benefited from are kind of consolidated within the constant student and, and that will still continue to grow over the years. It's the same thing. Get involved, ask questions. I think if people who are looking for the answers to be given to them, rather than think of yourself like an adventurer, you've got to, you've got to discover it. You've got to look through and, and determine things. You've got to ask, you've got to try things. People will always, like people are always happy to help. They're always, you know, happy to guide you along the path and try things. So if you have that mentality, it doesn't really matter what you do just yeah. because you're doing things and you'll, you'll find the right answer. Yeah. So Oscar, I've got one last question for you today. And that is, we've spoken about graduates a little bit now, but if you were graduating again, you've had mm. such a fantastic career, you've worked in so many organizations. If you were going to graduate again, let's say this year, so you're going to start yep. your career next year. What is one, one piece of advice that you would give yourself? I would give myself two pieces of advice. Number one, I would give back to my first year lecturers at university and go back to them and say, can I do a guest lecture based on my workplace experience and how I've applied what I've learned from you as a thank you to my lecturers. And mm. the second thing I would do is I would take more time to listen to executive assistants and administrators in the organization. They are the glue mm -hmm. that holds the organization together. They make everything run smoothly. And if you're in their dad books, they can slow everything down for you as well. So whether it's a receptionist, whether it's an executive assistant or any kind of administrator, these people are the glue that holds the organization together. I'd invest more time in getting to know them. Mm. And on a similar vein to that question, um, there's one question that I ask all the guests, which is if you were, uh, let's say you're Ishan's back in 1998, finishing university, going to start his career, what is, what's some advice um, that you give yourself? Funny you should say that, or funny you should ask that, James, because I went to New South Wales University, right, as you said in, in the introduction, and I was living in Randwick. And I remember distinctively the very first day I arrived in Australia and I arrived in Randwick. And I remember on that Saturday afternoon in February 1994, walking the Belmore Street or Belmore Road, I think, of Randwick, which is the main, main street. And I had all these questions going through my head in terms of simple as how do I get to the uni and you know where's my faculty how do I find my faculty to, to all the way from what's my first job going to be who will I marry where will I be all of that and recently my niece who is now studying engineering at the same faculty. I had the pleasure of helping her to settle in, in her apartment. So my wife and I, we've, we helped her to, you know, hire a flat and, you know, moved in uh, and, and set up. And as part of it, this evening, I had to basically go and grab something to eat. So obviously, you know, we're all familiar with the area, you know, we know the area at the back of the hands. And, I quickly rushed out and went to Belmore Road and trying to find a cafe or something um, to get something to eat. And in that moment, it's, I could feel myself, the, the Ishan who was in 94 on that road, it was as if I was watching this movie, I, I was watching myself in third person walking the road for the first time. And looking into the windows and I could feel the questions I had in my head at the time and I wanted to you know tell that Ishan saying hey it's gonna be okay 
it's going to be okay and it's going to be an enjoyable ride um, is what I saw myself telling the the 20 year old version of me and at the same time I also saw the 70 year old Ishan who had also been who had come there to tell the 40 something year old Ishan saying hey whilst you've now got questions about where to next you know, will I be able to make a difference like I want to? Is the world going to be okay? You know, will we travel again and all, and all that stuff? And again, I heard the voice of the 70-year-old Ishan saying, hey, it's going to be okay. And it's going to be wonderful. I've got one last question for you today, Lydia. And that is what question that I ask every guest. And it is, if you were graduating university again, starting in the workforce right now or this year, what are some tips, uh, some advice that you'd give yourself? The advice would be that you really do need to take the pressure off yourself from any expectation of having an answer today of what you need to do or should do, because inevitably you will probably start out doing something and find yourself even, you know, 15, 20 years down the track doing something completely different. So you don't have to have it all figured out. I think it's important to also understand your own kind of true nature. In other words, you know, people pursue that, I'm just going to do what feels right, what I'm interested in. And that's a great place to start. And others are a little bit more strategic well, I'm going to go over here because these fields have really kind of leading fields in terms of, you know, economy and you know, they pay well and all those things. So all I would say is wherever you're being lit in your thinking process, it's an indicator of what, indicator of what you value and what's important to you. And so you need to listen to that. And as long as you're not only doing things because you think you're going to get some financial reward and you know you just follow what it is that you know inner voice is telling you you want to do because it will lead to something else that leads to something else that leads to something else that leads to something else and i really there's no wrong turn because you're accumulating knowledge and experience the wrong turn is when you do something that has no interest, no appeal, does not light you up, does not in any way stimulate you, that's your wrong turn and you need to be thinking about doing something else. You know, I had that wrong turn very quickly in my career. It was my first job out of university. I was working law firm and thought that I was going to pursue a career in law and within three months was going home and I had that feeling of, it was a dead feeling. I knew I can't do this. It, when I kind of told friends and family that I was, you know, you know, aborting that mission, they thought I was absolutely mad. I was like, can't. You just finished the law degree. You got a great job with a great firm. You can't do that. And I'm like, no, no, I, I definitely am doing that. Perfect. That is not the right direction for me. And because I knew, I, I, I went home and I answered myself the question, if I don't want the partner's job, not in any kind of, you know, Machiavellian sense, but just in an aspirational context, if I don't want the partner's job, then I've got nothing to aim for here. I can't process steps don't make sense to me. So I need to go find something else that, you know, and, and the differentiator was me, the dynamism, the different every day, the unscripted way to work didn't exist for me in that, in that role. And it existed yeah. in what I went on to do. And so it's that really, I mean, have to be stop broken. No, it could have been anything that allowed me to have that unscripted, more dynamic, autonomous way of working. That's really cool. Well, I've got one more question for you, Andrew, and this is a question that I ask all the guests and, and that is from your career where you are now, 
let's say you were going back, you've just finished university and you're about to start your first job. What advice would you, would you give yourself now after all the experiences that you've had? Mm, um, yeah, I, this is, yeah. Okay. I would tell myself that the things that you're thinking about doing, don't just kick them, you know, don't just kick the can down the road and keep thinking about doing it. If there's something that you are thinking about doing, just do it. Probably would have started Maslow a couple of years earlier had I not been, not, not, not that I was, wouldn't have been scared, but I should have just made the decision earlier. But this is the case with a lot of things. I, I, yeah, I think I, if I can, I can sum it up without kind of pointing to specific experiences, just the thing that you're thinking about, just start it earlier. Because further down the track, when you do reflect on that, you'll think to yourself, you, you wasted time waiting and like, that's okay. That's going to happen, but there's no harm in just starting a new thing. If that's what you want to do, because you're either going to start it or you're not. So you might as well start it. <laughs> the two years or the four years that the degree is going to take is going to pass anyway. So you might as well do it. Or you're, you're going to, you're going to progress in your career and kind of go on and get broad anyway. So you might as well start the new thing now. Like it's all totally okay. So yeah, if you're thinking about doing something, don't wait. What, what is some advice that you would give someone starting their first job, whether it's, it could be to do with mental health and that's obviously an important piece, but is there anything that you would, even if it was yourself, when you were starting your first job, what advice would you give yourself there? Maybe we'll start with you, Aiden. It's good. There's a lot of advice I think I would give. I think back going back to my conversation about startups and corporates, I'd probably say, you know, take the time to research all the options available to you. And if it makes sense, go start, you know, join a startup or even better, start a startup. You're young, you've got time and it might work out really well for you. The second thing more specifically do to do with the mental health conversation is make sure that you're taking the time to preserve your own mental health. And one of the best ways of doing that is, you know, setting boundaries. So if you think work is too much, set a clear boundary, say this is overstepping the bounds that I'm comfortable with, and therefore I'm not going to do it or communicate them clearly to other people around you as well. So they know what you can do and what you can't do and go from there. And I think the third kind of piece of advice I would give, and this is probably more general is when you start a new job as a graduate, find out all the people that are going to be in your team and take every single person out for coffee once and make that a goal. In the first month, I don't care how many people it is. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be 20. Might be a bit expensive, but just do it. Take every single one of them out for coffee and get to know them a little bit. So ask them what makes them tick. Ask them you know, what their kind of work experience is, what they do at work in specifically. And, you know, just get to know them and you'll tend to find that A, they're, they're grateful because, you know, free coffee, who doesn't love that? And B, they get to know you on a personal level. And because of that, it's a lot easier to get to grips with the team, get to grips with the work. And you have those actual connections formed within the best month. Whereas, you know, a lot of people who tend to be quite introverted, don't really talk to anyone for you know a few weeks. And you just need to break out of your shell a little bit to do that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Eric, what about you? Any, any advice that you would, um, you would give someone? Yeah, absolutely. So when I first, or when I was supposed to graduate, I had a mentor at the time, one that I sought out, like I went to his speech and we started meeting regularly. And this is some advice that he gave me that I took two years to act on, uh, which is to build something, create a visible identity or content or something that you can be proud of outside of your role, whatever it happens to be. And that, that does a lot of things, right? It gives you confidence. It, it requires you to build the skills required to build whatever you want to build. It's a lot of good thing. And it means that you are visible. So if, and that's something that we can now point to, like we, we, we both have our own online identities that speak for us. And that's something that we go into in the book as well. But if I had started it earlier, it would be so much better. It would be, be so much, so much more valuable. That's definitely something that I would, that I would tell anyone who's early on in their career or even still in uni, build something you can point to and be like, I built that. It's a demonstration of what I could do. <laughs> Just to add on to that, James, you've pretty much done that 
hit that on the nail right there. Huh? On the Absolutely. head, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> With a uh, graduate theory, right? There yeah, you go. Yeah. Shining examples. <laughs> yeah, that's a great too, Derek. <laughs> no, certainly, I, I totally agree with both of you. And I think that's really profound advice because, yeah, Eric, what you're saying about building like almost your personal brand, I think is so important, especially in today's day and age where you can have things on the internet that are just there. Someone having to meet you or spend time with you, they can see what you're about and they can see the things that you've created. I think it's so important. And like with you, Aiden, I think it's a great advice too to connect with your team and even through the wider organization, you know, really starting that networking is something that you do proactively and, you know, really creating a network, you know, as much as you can, especially when you're early on, I think it's really, really important too. So if I could add on to what was, what Aiden was saying before, I think it's important to acknowledge the caveats that come with setting boundaries, especially when you're starting out and you want to be high achieving and you want to make a good impression, like we said before, and it can be hard to say no or know how to say no. And that can be, that, that's a difficult thing to navigate. So you take a lot on, but I will say that the first few years of maybe your twenties or your career or the time is the time where you get to test your bandwidth and see, you know, how much work can you do? How much can you take on before you feel yourself starting to burn out? And then you stay in that range. What is one tip you would give to new graduates? Your I believe that's your final question. Yeah, yeah I might that, have misquoted it some a little <laughs> bit, right, but yeah. what's one tip you would give to new graduates today? I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think the main thing is, is, is be intentional about what you're doing. So, and really that's something that, yeah, I think is so important is like, let's say it go like one o'clock forward a year, what would make this year a successful year for you, you know? And what things are you going to do this year that would be good? Like, even if it's coming to networking, like be intentional about who you're networking with and make that something that you do to get involved, participate really if, like life's an adventure. So you've got to go out and, and make stuff yourself. Like no one's, you know, it's coming back to even what we we're talking about before, like no one's going to come and like make your experience great for you. Like no one's going to sit there and be like, okay, you know what? This is the perfect opportunity for you. Here you go. Now, like here's like the perfect thing. Like you have to go and and create that stuff yourself. So you've got to go and meet the people you want to meet with. They're not going to come to you. You've got to go and seek opportunities that you want to do because no one's going to come and bring them to you. You've got to really take life with both hands and go out and, and embrace embrace the world and, and go out and seek things yourself. I think that is the one lesson that, you know, that I try to apply and that I think uh, that, that would be my lesson to a new graduate as well. It's like, yeah, the life's an adventure. It's a journey. It's, it's fantastic. But you've got to get in there and uh, to get the, make the most out of it. Get in the arena and go out and, and enjoy and really take life with both hands. I think that is fundamental and something that will not only be useful through your graduate experience, but it's something that's a fundamental principle, I think, through your entire life is to go out and and just tackle stuff head on and, and get involved. Don't just sit on the sidelines and, and mock people or... Just watch people that are doing cool stuff, like get in there and do cool stuff yourself. Get in there and, and meet people and participate, and do stuff. I think that is, that's something that I've grown into doing this year. And I think mm. it's something that I would recommend in, uh, to everyone. Yeah. Well, I've got one last question for you, Hayes. We've covered so much in this, in this sure. conversation, a lot of value yeah. here, but I want to ask one more and it's a question I ask all the guests and it's about if you were gr a graduate, maybe let's say starting next year you're about to start your grad role. What is some advice or maybe one piece of advice that you would give yourself? Oh, well, that is a good question. I would say, think broad, just, just, I, I would, I would tell myself that it's important to keep my own personal interests and hobbies and not lose them when, when going into a grad sort of role. I, I think the, the process of getting a grad job, I think is well documented and, and there's enough resources out there, but I think what we don't talk about is the importance of keeping your own personality and your, your own hobbies as you join your, your sort of big company, right? I think it's so easy. And I've seen this so many times when you're, you go through university, you've got all these hobbies and interests and passions, and then you enter the workforce and then it's all consuming, right? It's nine to five, but it's not really nine to five, right? It, mm. it's, it depends on what role you work for or, and what company you work for, but you'll be doing long hours. You'll, 
you'll find that you'll sometimes work on weekends and miss birthdays and dinners. But my looking back, so my thing is you want to keep your passions and interests and hobbies with you for as long as you can. And don't let your work life basically take over your whole life because it's easy to do that. There is always work. There will always be work. But You know, if you're into sport or gym or dancing or teaching or mentoring or have a business or whatever, whatever it is that gives you that joy and satisfaction in your life, you need to keep that because you'll realize that there are times when work isn't great and whether you've had a tough week or it's, you're really stressed, you do rely on your personal hobbies and interests to basically pick you up from that. For a lot of people, it's their relationships with their partner or your faith or working out in the gym. The the crazier work gets, the more important those parts of your life become to keep you Mm. grounded and and keep you sane. If you do get to a point where your work is all encompassing and there's nothing else, you'll burn out very quickly. You'll also look back and realize that all you've done is work and you've got nothing else to show for it. So... My, my advice for, for all these optimistic 21-year-old grads is keep your hobbies, keep your interests, keep your passions, work, and, and have, have work to be around that, yeah, as opposed to just having work be the only thing that you have in life. It also makes you so much more interesting, knowledgeable, and the more senior you go, I feel like your relationships become super important in the workplace, and you'll draw on those experiences of traveling or, or having a business or working out, you'll draw on those parts of your life in order to build those relationships in the workplace, the more senior you get. So that's, that's something I'd, I'd probably recommend. And the one question that I want to finish with today, Adam, we've spoken about your great experience and the podcast and things like that. And I wanted to take it back to some, some advice that you would give some graduates that are listening. They might be their first year in the workplace, knowing that all the things that you know now and all the experiences you've gone through, what is one, or perhaps you've got multiple pieces of advice for people that are in that situation? Mm. I, before we started, I had three, like three in mind that I want to mention, um, but I'm going to change it. Maybe we'll have to do like in a year or two, we'll have to do a second app and I'll give those, those other three that I was going to give, but maybe it's changed by then, but I'm actually going to change it on the fly. Uh, and combine the first answer I gave and the last answer I gave. I'm talking about the the whole grad experience I went through the first time where I saw it as a, a game and a competition and I thought I was in it so I had to do it and I had to beat everybody else and I this was just the, the path that everyone's taking. So, okay, I'm going to jump on this path and try and do it better than everybody else because I have to because that's what everybody does. Um, that was the wrong approach. Obviously, the right approach is the, the want to approach that we kind of spoke about when it comes to reading. Like if you actually genuinely want to do it and you actually have a genuine curiosity about it and you see there are benefits, um, you're reading books and you see that there are things that you can learn and apply to whatever it is you're doing, work, career, business, relationships, friendships, whatever it is, then you're actually going to enjoy reading. So if I actually flipped my perspective on work and saw it as something that I wanted to do and saw it as something where I can develop skills, something where I can learn new things, something where I can build some bit of a, a reputation or a bit of a brand or build a network or if I, can, if I actually saw all those benefits and it became something I wanted to do, then it would have been a much better experience for me. And I, I'm, sure I, I'm sure right now, if I was a grad, I would be so much better as a grad than I was five years ago as a grad that's for sure um i think the advice is not to uh quit your grad job and 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 start a business or whatever it is that you might be thinking i think it's realizing that you can do both you can have the full-time job plus stuff on the side and they're not competing with each other they can actually complement each other and just placing more value i guess on on how i saw the grad experience rather than just dismissing it as oh, I'm doing all this stuff on the side. So this stuff is less important. Yeah, cool. That's great to hear. And I've got one last question for you today, Ingrid, and that is about people starting their career. You know, people starting their career in 2022. Yeah. Is there one piece of advice or, you know, what advice would you give to young people starting their career in 2022? In 2022, well, I feel with you <laughs> to start your career now. 
And um, because what, what's, uh, what's happening, it could be actually an advantage, but usually starting a career is like a rite of passage point where you would have done certain things before that because of COVID haven't happened. So what might be good to find some area where you really focus on further developing yourself, your self-awareness. And that could be in all sorts of ways. It could be with meditation. It could be with journaling. It could be yoga. It, it could be just conversations with other people. So that you become more and more aware of who you are and what you want. Because the biggest thing will be in 2022 and most likely next year as well, that you come in and everything is so uncertain and complex. So it's very really challenging to say, this is actually my vision or longer term thing. It might be enough to say, uh, I would like to learn these five things in the next year. And these are my mm. passions and this is my purpose. So how bring, do I bring this together and find the right organization to work in this area? Mm. And then during the year, take it step by step and sort of check in. Is it still what you want it to do? Or mm. is it that suddenly other people have pushed you into something where actually in the beginning, uh, you didn't see it coming, but then over time it sneaked in. And so you lose mm. a little bit yourself. And so it's good to sort of when, while you're learning about yourself to put in like regular checkpoints, let's say every month or quarter, where you check in, is this really what I want and what's the next step for it? And then take it mm. maybe in shorter bursts there are some people most likely finishing now have a long-term vision and goal and that's great as long as they can hold it loosely and say i might not get there in a straight line but i might take many detours but i still hold mm. it there like a, a beacon like a lighthouse that i can sort of follow but i might not go straight i might go and do some detours and maybe while you're on a detour you notice oh actually this is much better and then that's where mm. the check-in point comes in, where you know, just actually now I know enough about myself. I have the courage to say, no, I'm actually changing my goal. And and that's fine. So that that's how I would approach it. These like long-term hmm, visions and goals, they're, they're good, but only if you hold them quite lightly. Yeah. Having yeah, said that, you will cool. find a few yeah. people who do that and they're brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the majority, I think it serves them better and their emotional and uh, mental health if they say it's okay to change and not know. Mm. It's okay to really mm. not know and then take a break, explore what's around you, decide something, try it like an experiment and then learn something from it and to the next step. And that's okay. Mm. It's it's you don't have to know everything. Impossible. I do have one more question for you, Dan, Shit. and that is around you know people that are graduating and going into jobs at the start of this year. That it's twenty twenty two. They're they're starting out in their career. And what is some, some advice that you would give someone starting their career this year? Oh, and if, I mean yeah, regardless of whether they're going to a startup or a corporate, I I would say optimize. For learning like and when i say optimize for learning optimize for the learning that you want if you like so not just like oh okay here's the structured program at like you know your, your company but like find out the things that you want to learn and your your priority should be like how do i learn those things as quickly as possible you know how can i practice them how can i teach them how can i engage with them like maybe you want to become a really good public speaker maybe you want to become a really good salesperson a really good developer but i, I think like being very intentional about like the way you spend your time and it's not every second of the day you always need breaks but like you know at work or maybe it's like side projects yeah just just really thinking intentionally about like what like what am i learning and how fast am i learning it having a clear framework and plan there i, I think probably the the other piece is as, as best you can try and find other people who care about similar things to you find other people as in like i mean then this, that's a two-part one right number one and th this is an ongoing question in life but start exploring like 
what are, what are the problems that you'd want to work on for like 10 plus years in your career? Like, what are the things you're like, wow, that's crazy. Like maybe it's climate change or like nuclear warfare or, you know, artificial intelligence. There's all these cool areas and, and it takes time, you know, reading, exploring. But I think one of the best things you can do is just talking to other people. Like co-learning is such a beautiful thing. So find people with good values who have really high aptitude, who care about similar problems and are doing something about it. And just try and learn from them, teach each other. Like I, I look back at uni and like, you know, there are several friends, like, even that I have to this day. And we've actually gone down quite different paths. Friends who went super deep into cryptocurrency, friends who went very deep into the the law space, friends who went into video game design, friends who were doing, you know, their PhDs. But kind of a common thread there is kind of just like, yeah, like, I think like, like a really strong core set of values that's shared and just a really, really strong curiosity and intentionality to the way they live their lives. And so I think like just, yeah, finding people that you resonate with, like the, the people you surround yourself with will just have a huge, huge outsized impact on how your career progresses. One more thing before I forget, start creating content now. Find the things you care about and just start creating. Newsletter, TikTok, social media posts, art, whatever it may be, it doesn't even matter. But when you create content, you will find people who care about things similar to you. Um, and that is just going to be a superpower for years and years to come. I've got one more question for Gilly to finish off the interview today. And that is a lot of this podcast is around careers and around grads and it's around people starting their career. And so I want to ask you, what advice would you give to people that are starting their career again or start, this is starting their career in 2022? So James, when do you start your career? In my head, the notion is that when you sort of get your first full-time job. Oh. Uh-huh. So, your tertiary education has nothing to do with your career. Yeah, I think it it, it does. Yeah, it definitely does. So, what's your question? <laughs> I think, how about when they're entering the workforce? So, uh, if you read 18 and Lost, Peter, are you familiar with 18 and Lost? No. James, you are, aren't you? Yeah. 18 and Lost was a book written by a number of the constant students, which has as its sub theme what we know at 26 or 27 that we wish we had known at 18. Because the knowledge, experience, values, skills that you take into the decision making for a university course is very much less than what you have at 26 when you have experienced one of the most important formation periods of your life. So the first lesson I think James to take out of that is keeping an open mind and an open heart is much more than just the glitzy saying of the moment. It's one of life's most vital survival skills. So point number one is you haven't wasted your education. You haven't wasted tertiary stuff, but keep your heart and your mind open as to how you're going against that thing. Always and be prepared to question yourself. Always don't feel embarrassed or ashamed you're tempted towards thinking I've made a mistake. No, you haven't made a mistake. It's like Michael in first year law. You're just learning. And if you do that and you start understanding what turns on your passions, where your delights are coming from, what you're picking up, which really seems to be the authentic you as well doing it for yourself rather than your employer or your parents or other people or things that have an expectation of you, your ability to break away from what you feel from the bombardment of social media and all the stuff you're reading, which is think forcing you in a particular direction. Somewhere along the way, your gut will also kick in. I'm not quite sure about that because it's not my field of expertise, but 
I say to everyone who wants to listen these days, you have three very important ways of knowing, and that's your head, your heart, your gut. You've got to keep them all in balance. You've got to listen to all of them. And then it's just walking down the path of life, understanding that it's all a process, yes, and it's all about mm -hmm. the journey. It's not so much about destination. So, you know, there's a lot of cliche in this, but it's a cliche. Stay in the present. Don't get hijacked by in three years' time what I want is. Or in five years' time, I aim to be a senior associate at DLA. They're, they're all right to have out, but it shouldn't be totally preoccupied with your plans. I've got a lovely um, guy of my age, uh, retired land surveyor, Jewish. Uh, you know, when, when people in our presence start talking about planning, Denny always says, if you want to hear God laugh, play it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I absolutely I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, welcome the surprises. You know, embrace the surprises. Own them. I didn't think that was going to happen. Wow. Where did that bit of gift come from? How did I, how did I end up meeting a person like that at a nightclub at 11.30 p.m. in the evening? And this is a person who may have a contribution to make to my current curiosity about my career or something else. Where does this stuff come from? For myself, I would say be diverse. Yeah. Life is more than a single career. Life is about switching on the totality of your unique giftedness. All of them. Don't leave any of them on the shelf. I hit planes in the back. No. No. So that's, that's, you know, and that's an awful lot to digest. And I could give you a lot of other stuff about words like generosity. Particularly, you know, if you're in a business mm -hmm. circumstance where there are clients involved, be generous to them, not because you want to have a, a reputation of some sort, but because that people want generosity and they respond to it. Yeah. yeah. We all know that because we've all experienced it. But that's not hard, is it? When we know how we feel, about people who will be genuinely generous. In other words, they're not looking for anything in return. They just do it because mm -hmm. they want to do something for us. Mm -hmm. And that turns on something within us, which is exactly the same as it turns on within all other people in similar circumstances. Sure, there can be some cynics. You can hear people say it. Why would they have done that? They must think there's something in it for them. We're going to try and rise above that because authentic people don't think that. They understand what unconditional generosity gives them. And you can feel it exactly the same way. So in that work relationship scenario, generosity has exactly the same impact as in a personal relationship scenario. If you're in a personal relationship with somebody, you know, it might be somebody that you're dating at early stages, you do something for them. You may even do it unknowingly, but just means so much to them in terms of something generous. You might be waiting to take them out and you tidy up the kitchen rather than sitting there watching yeah, one of the Adelaide footy teams playing football on their televisions. <laughs> yeah, it's just all of that sort of stuff. What not? The, the whole of life skills are exactly the same as the business life skills, professional life skills, personal life skills. Why? Well, you're only one person. And it's not three of you. It's not one that puts on a tie and becomes business, another one who's sort of puts on a basketball outfit, becomes a basketballer, and then probably also is here and being taking somebody out on a date. You just thought, 
but all those skills are better. We don't, we don't put on our kids days. I'm curious, what would be some advice or some, some really key principles that you would, you would give to people going through this transition into their first like full-time role? Perfect. The, the number one piece of advice I would give is share what you're up to, share it with your family, share it with your friends, share it with your network. Just tell people, Hey, this is what I want to be doing. This is the type of work. This is the, what excites me about share that with as many people as possible. And inside of sharing it with people, things are going to happen, right? Like people are going to be like, oh, hey. Have you heard about this job opportunity? Have you heard about this volunteering opportunity? Have you thought about joining this hackathon? Have you seen this thing? People who are in that same sort of journey are going towards something else might be like, Hey, I, I'm also doing this. Let's catch up. Let's connect. Let's collaborate. And you might learn from them. You might contribute to them. And inside of sharing what you're up to and what you're out to accomplish, which could be like an early stage of career. It's like, Hey, I really want to be an amazing product manager. I really want to be an amazing systems engineer. I really want to be an amazing, uh, junior HR manager. I really want to be an amazing anything insert like career here. Like you can start to kind of get, Hey, what excites me about this? And it doesn't have to be this big aspirational, amazing sort of thing, right? It doesn't have to be like, Hey, I'm joining. I'm joining Tesla to create the, the brand new next, like powered smart home battery motor motorcycle, whatever it is, right? It doesn't have to be this incredible. That's going to go to Mars, by the way. It's not, it doesn't yeah. have to be that. Like you could have a look at your early stage career. It'd be like, okay, look, like what I'm out to, what I'm committed to is like, Hey, I'm committed to really discovering the world of finance so that I can make a difference to the everyday people who use company X's services. Yeah. Right. And as you share that, as you start to explore that, not really your two things will happen, right? Like you will start to deepen your awareness of like, Hey, what am I actually wanting to do? So that will naturally happen. You deepen it. The more conversations you have, the deeper it'll get for you. The more that you explain it or share it with people, they're like, Oh, like, that's interesting. Tell me about that. The more you will, it'll be real for you. And the more that your environment can kind of start to pull for, Hey, James is the person who does that podcast. Of course, I'm going to like, if I, if someone comes up to me, of course, I'm going to recommend it to him. <clears throat> it, it would just make sense because you're sharing what you're up to is the number one thing that influences your environment. That could be a post that could be in conversations like, Hey, what have you been doing or what have you been up to? Or how's it going in Australia is the equivalent of saying. Hello, but please don't actually tell me how you're actually feeling or what you're doing. The correct response actually is like, yeah, nothing much. How about you? Mm -hmm. But instead, when you get asked that question, Hey, what have you been up to? You can actually talk about that. You can just share, Hey, like I recorded a podcast in the week, the, the podcast guests actually flipped it on me, started asking me questions for a little bit. <laughs> it was actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. and, and out of that, look, what I'm about to create for this podcast is like, I'm, I'm really going to think about how do I create more and more value for people because I'm committed that the listeners of graduate theory podcasts and the, the community that we're building really experiences having the best possible resources and the best preparation and the support and guidance that they need so that they can take the action in their lives to, to take their careers to the next step. So that's what yeah. I've been doing this weekend. So that, that could be, I just made that up for you, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not and people were like, wow, <laughs> tell me about that. Yeah. And then, you, then it builds and then it builds. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I like share what you're up to. Share what you're up to. But I've got one more question for you, and it's something that I ask all the guests, and and that is, what advice would you give someone starting their career in 2022? Build your network. It may seem hard and a daunting task at the start, and it is, but it's a marathon, not a race, and there are plenty of beautiful, amazing people out there that want to talk to you and that want to share <clears throat> their experiences with you. And 
don't be afraid to ask them. The worst they can say is no, literally that's the worst that they can say. And the best that they can say is, hell yeah, let's go and have a coffee. And then who knows what's going to happen once that happens. So, you know, it's it, the, it's an asymmetric risk and it's an amazing thing and, and you really should be doing that. And, and I understand that not everyone's an extrovert and so it's more difficult for others than it is for some of us. But try to fight it or try to find ways that, that it can work for you. You know, maybe it's online. Maybe it's like pinging someone and asking some questions. You know, it doesn't always have to be face to face. Yeah, face to face is great to build relationships, but you know, it doesn't always have to be there. Are, there are other ways. There's always there's always another way to solve a problem. So try to innovate, do some reading, and, and figure it out. But yeah, I think those networks, those relationships, what will hold you strong throughout your career and your life, and it's something that your job doesn't own you know when you leave you take that with you and that becomes some of your capital that you can use to improve your life and improve your performance in your role and just have a you know Mm. <laughs> have, have a nicer life it's really good so yeah well i've got one more question for you today penny and that's a question i ask all the guests and it's if you are starting your career finishing year, you're starting your first job again this year. Is there anything, any advice that you would give yourself if you were restarting your career today? Oh, that is a hard one because I love my job. Like I'm doing really well. And if I have to go back and start it over again, I would be panicking because the competition is way high. All right. <laughs> like COVID hit mm. so many people out of job, so many great designers out there. I think like if I didn't get a job offer because like going through a job application again is exhausting mm. going through graduate program i think for for sure i would not apply for graduate program i'm done i'm done with that <laughs> so i'll probably look for something more more entry level personally and even though like the bench is so high i'll probably start a business if i'm going to start my career again I'll start a business and I'll stop applying. Like I'll apply, mm. but I wouldn't be upset if I don't get it because I'll have my own things to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's cool. And it's certainly, you know, you've shown that there are plenty of opportunities out there for side hustles and for extra things to do. If you, if you can look for them you know, and, and be interested in what problems need solving in the world. So I think that's, that's great advice. And certainly I think we're in the, we're in the period now where people are applying the grad roles for starting for next year. So. I think that's great advice and very timely advice as well. So, Oh, it's stressful yeah. for them. Like, I didn't want to go through that ever again. <laughs> like, job application yeah. is way stressful than a breakup. Yeah. I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> it's so bad. Like, just quote that. Yeah. <laughs> job application rejection is way more stressful than a guy rejecting yeah. <laughs> you. Absolutely. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah, funny. because... It hurts, right? Like every day you're checking your email, mm. you didn't get a job, you didn't get a job, like your life sucks and you're surrounded by people who are like making money and flushing their suit in Barangaroo. Yeah. So that's one. And I never get to experience that because it didn't work in Barangaroo. But I think like creating a job for yourself will help you get mm. a job. Yeah, And a absolutely. lot of people don't really like this. Yeah, certainly. I think that's great <laughs> advice. And yeah, absolutely. I think doing those side hustles and things like that's open to anyone. So if you can pay attention to the problems in the world and and help people solve them, then I think, yeah, you'd be setting yourself up in the right way. Absolutely. And also know people. I think like, I wish if I went back more, I wish I knew more people, even though I know a lot of people, I just, I just want to know more people, yeah. like no more smart, talented people Yeah, that is within your circle. Like you need people like that in your life. And I've got one last question for you, uh, Adam, just to finish off. And, and that is, you know, a lot of the listeners here are younger, they're, they're perhaps starting their careers or in the first few years of their career. And I wonder if there's any advice or any lessons that, that you would, you know, even thinking back to your own experience at that time, any uh, advice that you would give yourself if you were in, in those, um, in that position again? Yeah, I think dream, dream big, be bold. It, it takes just as much effort to achieve, um, big big goals as it does small ones. So might as well dream big, um, and, and make sure you, uh, believe in yourself. So I'm going to write a series of, um, 
micro blogs on self-belief because it's becoming apparent to me that um, a number of people that are beginning on the entrepreneurial journey, um, they, they just need to increase their self-belief. And self-belief means no matter what happens, no matter what task or challenge, I'm up to the task. I'm equal to and up to the task. This type of self-worth, this type of self-belief, um, and is, is absolutely indispensable to success. And then I would just say, go out and find a mentor or two. You know, I have two or three at any given time and I mentor about six or seven, cause I believe the world is a big circle. So you, when you're receiving, you need to give. And, uh, then the universe keeps giving you more and more mentors if you're mentoring others. And, um, so I would definitely say, um, you know, believe in yourself, dream big and surround yourself by one or two wise mentors, um, and go for walks in the park with them and put the problems of the week in front of them and ask them what they think you should do. And if you do that often enough, you'll gain a lot of wisdom. I've got one last question for you, Namada, and that's a question that I ask all the guests that come on the show. And it's almost a flip of the previous question, <laughs> but you know, it, it, like part of the graduate theory is, you know, career advice and how can young people really grow their career? And we've had some great advice from you tonight, but you know, what's some advice that you would give to young people who are starting their career uh, today? Yeah, I think really the, the biggest thing is like, it's not life and death. And, and I'll elaborate on that. It's, it, it's not the end of the world. Like your first career is not the career. It doesn't need to be the career you end up with for the rest of your life. And you can change your mind. And you can change your mind 2,000 mm. times. And you can switch <laughs> industries and switch careers and say, or, or be 10 years into a career and go, I'm really bored of that. I'm going to go do a, do a degree, do a different degree and, and go to a different route. So I think there's a lot of stress I see about you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds trying to map out the rest of their life. You, you just can't, you mm. know, <laughs> you don't mm, need yeah. to, you don't need to know what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Just, you just need to know what's the next thing right then and there. Do that next thing. If it fulfills you and you love it, great. Keep at it. If it doesn't, then, you know, don't, don't settle. Go back and go, okay, well, that doesn't fulfill me. What, what else should I be doing? And don't be afraid to change and switch and change your mind. Mm. One question I ask, I know we're, we're almost out of time. <laughs> we'll try and squeeze it in. But something I ask all the guests is, you know, what's some advice that you'd give yourself if you were restarting your career at the start of this year? Oh, that's a good one. What advice would I give myself if I was restarting my career? Maybe preempting probably that, which I just said, that would probably be it. Like think yeah. about the next five years, who do you want to mm -hmm. help? A practical way to do that is, I think if someone's lost, try to answer this question. I think if you're lost, and I'm sure I'm stealing this from someone, this is not an original idea. But the point of a career is to end unnecessary suffering. So if you're not sure what you want to do, try to end unnecessary suffering. What does that mean? Find some suffering, find someone that's struggling find something that shouldn't be suffering, like where we have a resourcefulness problem, not a resource problem. You know, like I booked on, I was telling you before we started recording, I booked an Airbnb today. And when I logged on, the homepage of Airbnb said, you know, can we help that house 200,000 um, Ukrainian refugees or something like that? Obviously there's more than that, but that was the number that was up there. I'm pretty sure it was 200,000. And so there's a bunch of people on Airbnb who have a vacant place in different parts of the world who can say, yes, actually, I could put a family up for two weeks. I could actually go without two weeks of Airbnb income and I could put someone up for two weeks or two months or two years or whatever it is, and I could, I could do this. And it's a small sacrifice. My family's not going to starve. I could do this. So lots of people listening might not have a spare Airbnb to put up, but they might have a spare weekend. They might have a couple of hours. They might have 50 bucks a month that they can donate. So the question would be, my advice to, me, to a younger self would be find a problem that you care about, find some suffering, as weird as that sounds, try to find something with some leverage where it doesn't need to happen, where there is a solution, where there are great organizations or great people and start getting involved in that space, like change your proximity. The thing that changed everything for me was proximity. It's the hardest advice that I'd give to my younger self, but it's really hard to say to people is like, I think you need to go to a place in the world where there are real problems and spend some time there. 
Now, there are real problems in your neighborhood, right? Domestic abuse, all that sort of stuff. But it's not like you're just going to go knocking around on the neighbor's house. Like, is there any suffering happening in here? Like, it's kind of, it's not the same, you know? So it's kind of hidden. Mm. So it's either tap into what's happening in the local environment or go somewhere, be in an environment where it smacks you. Like, for me, I needed that smack of like, hey, there are real problems out here and you can do something about that. And it's not overly, like, palatable, but it was really practical. And that gap between what I thought I wanted and what I needed became really apparent. So that would probably be my advice. Be around somewhere where there's a real challenge. Be around people who are actually solving it. Like, I was just in, in, saw this crisis and I didn't see anyone solving it. It'd be really depressing. But then I went to the refugee border crossing and I saw local families, bakers, people who had next to nothing, giving away everything. Like, closing their business Mm -hmm. and giving away all the bread to refugees who they didn't know, who were from another country, who didn't even have the same religion. Like, some of the religions blatantly said, these guys are the enemy. And they're like, yeah, but Mm -hmm. we're going to give our entire lives to helping them. I was like, that's religion, Mm -hmm. you know? That's what Mm -hmm. it's about. And it's just things like that, being around that, being around people who are so selfless, so generous, that that just changed my perspective. So... I think a version of that rant is what I'd hope to tell my younger self. Good. You know, one more question mm. to ask you today around you know, your career and the things you've done. And we've had a really interesting chat today. But people starting their career this year, do you have any advice for graduates as they go into this world of you know, crypto, remote work, all these kind of new trends that are coming up? Yeah, I think I'll heavily push for crypto. I think it's very much the future. The amount of talent rushing into this industry is simply like unfathomable. Uh, it, coming from like a Web2 world for my full-time job just over a year ago and now to like back, really be back into it and working and hiring and experimenting in this industry, it's crazy. When me and Marcos actually started the company, we said like, this actually might be our last chance to be early and really <laughs> d- define what our vision for what we want this industry um, and this space to look like. And that was actually the same thing for joining an early stage startup. I, I had very like strong beliefs on how what work should be like and how you should run a team um, from like reading books and talking to friends um, and what what company culture should be like. And I think I still have those strong beliefs about work, but also like what I think the future of Web3 and crypto and the internet should be. And I think if people do have these like morals and beliefs and you want to apply them to this industry, yeah. It, it sounds maybe a bit crazy, but I actually think it's the last time, these next three to five years uh, uh, will be the time when you can actually make an impact and actually spread your morals um, and, and beliefs at a scale um, where they're impactful to hopefully like millions and billions of people. Well, yeah, that, um, that's going to be my last question. And it's something that, I, that like, you, you've sort of already answered in some ways, but something I ask all the guests at the end of the show is, you know, what advice would you give to someone that's just starting out in their career? Like, um, hmm. You know, given all that you know now, if you had to so go wind back at the clock and, and restart things, yeah. what's the advice that you'd give, you'd give yourself? Listen to your instincts because they are very rarely wrong. That would be my number one advice. If, if your gut instinct is saying, this isn't quite right, ask questions. And listen to it. Yeah, I think I think that's important too. I think uh, yeah, you know, you've got the mind and and the heart and the option. Yeah, combined and that heart, powerful things. So you've got to the, listen to both. That mind gut connection. There's so much research now that shows there's such a close link between what happens in our gut and what happens in our brain. And there's some really good books, none of which I can remember the names of. Um, But there's so much research around that. Like the last 20 years has just shown this really strong connection between the mind and the brain Mm. and the gut. And so if you're interested, do some research and find out more. But I really believe, listen to your instinct. We've all got an instinct. It's like that sixth sense. So, you know, pay attention, particularly if it, you know, you might call it the spidey senses on the, or the, you know, the tingles on the back of your neck or your spidey senses. but in my experience, they're not usually wrong. 
Thanks again for listening to Graduate Theory. Please consider subscribing to the Graduate Theory newsletter. It's the first link in the description. You get an email straight to your inbox every single week with a summary and my takeaways from that week's episode. Thanks again. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.